going on? Little Dap, it's Jared Monts, former pro and founder of OnlineSoccerAcademy.com. You are watching interview highlights of Taylor Twelman on my Jared Monts Soccer Podcast. Taylor is an ESPN color analyst, founder of ThinkTaylor.org, and a former MLS star that scored 101 MLS goals. Listen to the full interview at OnlineSoccerAcademy.com or on iTunes by searching Jared Monts Soccer Podcast. Enjoy. Well, you do the color for ESPN, CSN New England, and Philadelphia Union games. What's a typical day like uh, for you now in terms of workload to prepare for those games? Well, CSN New England, I don't do games for. Um, I do another show that does all the uh, New England sports, uh, Red Sox, Celtics, Patriots, Bruins. So that's fun because that's me being a fan and giving them my sports opinion. But... For games, it's all about preparation, and I try to watch the previous, you know, if I'm doing a game for ESPN, and it's a nationally televised game, I want to watch the week before game of both teams that I'll be calling to get an understanding of what last week was all about for those teams coming into this week, which is what I'm calling. The cool thing about calling Philadelphia games is you get to see a team grow, mature, even struggle throughout the whole year because you're calling a majority of their games. So that's been a real nice experience. But let's be honest, I'm calling it with a legend in J.P. Del Camera, so it's been pretty easy. So uh, you retired from professional soccer at the end of 2010 MLS season with career-ending concussion injury. How difficult was it to say goodbye? Uh, it wasn't difficult at all. And I know a lot of people say, well, that, that doesn't make any sense. Well, it does when... You walk into a doctor's office, uh, he looks you in the face and says, do you want to live here 45, 55, 65? And naturally, when you've been sick for two years, you look at him and say, well, yeah, he said, then soccer's got to go. It was a huge relief uh, knowing why I was sick and that I could never play again. Is it sad? Of course. I mean, I, I played one game after the age of 28. And, you know, there, there will always be in the back of my mind what could have been, should have been, you know, what, there was a lot of soccer left to be played, but my brain is sick. My brain is uh, unhealthy, and I needed to uh, stop it immediately. And it, it was a kind of relief off my shoulders to know that, you know what, the Reds can move on, and U.S. soccer can move on, and I can move on with uh, my next phase of my life. Mm -hmm. Well, just going back to the past a bit, what was the best part of being a, a healthy pro soccer player? I mean, it, it was it, to do something that you absolutely love and – for everyone that knows my family history and all the pro athletes in my family, I kind of knew at a young age I was born to do it. So to do it at just, I don't know, I think the best part was I enjoyed every single day. And for anyone that played with me knows that I showed up at the locker room, jokes were, a smile was always there. I was, I was ready to rock and roll and really enjoy life, and I did. And honestly, I have no regrets. Well, in uh, 2008, Preston North End of England made a, a big offer for you. I believe it was $2.5 million to buy you from the Revs. How frustrating was it uh, for MLS to pass on that offer, and, and why did they? Um, first of all, it's a business, and I know that. A um, big part of it was my family has always reminded me of that after their experiences in pro sports, so I always knew that. I just had... I have been told one thing, and that was you're only worth a million dollars, and we're going to sign you according to that price tag because I had an offer from the team in Norway for a million dollars. Well, eight months later, once I got my permit thanks to Bob Bradley in 07 playing me in the 2007 Gold Cup, there was English teams that all of a sudden became interested, and that $2.5 million dollar offer from Preston North End, if I played 20 games for Preston North End, it would have been three months. And I just never thought that, you know, I, I personally believed that I didn't think MLS would ever get another offer for a player like me of that magnitude, especially when Clint Dempsey just went to Fulham for, you know, four million. So it was frustrating because I felt like England was the, you know, if there was any other league that fit my style, I felt like England was that league. Uh, in saying that, I understood the rest. I understood Steve Nichol calling me saying, if I'm coach of the Reds, you're my center forward. So the only thing I'll never understand is why would there not, you know, a reason, why would there no offer? Why did they not re-sign me? And I know I re-signed the year before, but listen, every other sport in this country, when a player or when a coach, you know, Les Miles, Michigan's, University of Michigan's football team, the 
job opens, Les Miles just re-signed with LSU, he gets mentioned for Michigan, what does LSU do? They re-sign him to some new kind of contract. And that's just common courtesy, and that was respect, but I felt like that was the most frustrating part was not only did you, re- you know, reject the great offer from Preston North End, it's not like I was leaving them for free, you know, but it's one of those things where I understand it's a business, and uh, it's unfortunate it just didn't work out. Well, now that you're on the other side, other side of the table, as an analyst, when you ask a player a question and you know you're getting a, a calculated answer or a safe answer, do you ever feel like a therapist saying, okay, now tell me what's really going on? No, because I'm going to tell you what's really going on in my eye, you know what I mean, in my head. So you, you can give me your whole dermy, so I'm still <laughs> going to tell you, so give my opinion of whether or not I think you're telling the truth. So it doesn't bother me, you know. Yeah. Uh, if an athlete or someone, you know, a coach wants to give me a uh, run-of-the-mill bull Durham cliche, I'll come right back at you and tell you what I really think, and <laughs> then you can judge by your reaction. Yeah, I can see a quote on MLS soccer. Landon Donovan was quoted as saying this, and it was translated by Taylor Twelman as this. <laughs> <laughs> At Rachel B. Clark on Twitter asks, Knowing what you know now, growing up, would you have spent more time on a certain technical part of your game? <laughs> no, I mean, it's a good one. I, I get asked that a lot when I do camps and stuff. I, the only thing I did growing up was shoot on goal, and obviously it worked all right. <laughs> I don't know if I would ever change that. All right. Well, this user submitted question is on behalf of all my online soccer academy.com players and just youth players in general. What advice do you have for young players that are trying to live the dream of playing pro soccer? Well, you know, if your goal as an 11 and 12 year old, there's a dream of playing pro soccer, but don't worry about tomorrow, worry about today. And I know it's so easy to say that, but if you're so worried about tomorrow, today passes you by. And, I, and coming from a player that had to retire early, there's nothing better. Just whatever that day brings to you, it's in, and today is Thursday. Thursday comes up, you do your best at whatever training it is, whatever schoolwork you do, because if you have small goals and you achieve small ones, they add up very quickly. That large goal and large dream of playing a pro soccer will be, uh, will be achieved. Great advice.